So there's a little flaw in our current implementation of this the ship moving off to the right there. And maybe I can uh, write some code to help you see what that is. I'm going to say int debug int get zero. And in here I'm going to say if debug int plus plus mod. Actually, we'll start this at one plus plus because I want to start at one because I want to let it get through its cycle before before this actually happens. So let's let's say twenty. If that's equal to zero, so on the twentieth frame, let's do something that's going to take a long time. Let's four int i get zero i less than I'll say a thousand i plus plus. And then here I'm going to say q debug. And I'm going to write hello. Now QDebug is essentially a wrapper around standard C out, but I could also use QDebug to, since it is an abstract wrapper, I could have it write to a file or write to a database or other kind of things. But I'm just going to use QDebug since we're using QT. I want to show you this other way of doing things. Pound include QT slash QDebug. Okay, good. Control minus to get back to where we're at. So. <clears throat> Pause the video and think about what I'm trying to show you here, trying to accomplish with this code that I've just written. Okay, hopefully you can see about every 20th frame, I want to do something that's going to extend the length of this frame. I want to make this frame last a long time. I don't want to last forever, but I definitely want to make it last a long time. Let's build this, run this, see the result. You see that? Every so often, actually every 20 frames, we... the the uh, Oh, I got a paint issue there. The... The ship kind of hiccups there. In fact, I'm going to slow that ship down even more. And let's let's see here. So most frames are good, but then every 20th frame, and it could be realistically in a game, it could be any frame. And I actually had this issue happen to me when I was working out in industry. I had some code that was I wrote poorly, and it was doing a little bit too much work, and and all of a sudden my frame rate would choke. And so it doesn't give you this good fluid experience. I'm sure if I sent you out into space. You can see all the hellos are printing here. But if I sent you out into space and threw you uh, every 20th frame, you probably wouldn't hiccup for a little bit. I'm actually going to crank this up a little bit so it's even more dramatic. Bring this to a, a 5, speed our ship up a little bit. And pop, pop, pop. Okay, definitely not a fluid experience. This is called a spike in frame weight rate, and we definitely want to avoid that. We want... We want to maintain a high frame rate anywhere from 30 to 60 frames a second, unless you're in seconds, uh, 60 <laughs> frames as per second. But if you even get one renegade frame in there once a second, it really ruins the fl fluidness of the experience. I also want to point out something else. Notice the triangle. It stops, and then it continues from where, where it's at. In theory, if I did have a spike, or what I should expect or should experience, if I have a spike in a frame, what I want to happen is even though the frame time stopped, I want to keep the actual real-time clock where we should be at. So let me see if I can illustrate that. Watch my mouse as this triangle moves across the screen. I'm going to keep moving my mouse roughly at the speed that it should be moving. Maybe I'm not doing a good job, but even even between here, when we do have a hiccup, the triangle should jump to its proper position according to our real time. All right, let me, uh, just so I can illustrate that a little more, I'm going to start the ship off at negative one, negative one, and have it go across the screen. So, boop, boop. So I'll see my mouse. It, I mean, even though we're having a long frame and we're not drawing the ship, the ship should pop to its correct position according, according to time. So that's our next goal to fix. And how do we do that? Well, we have to do that using the system clock. I'm on Windows. I'm going to use the Windows API to time the to query the system clock, figure out how much time has passed, and then use that time to do my calculations. So instead of saying let's let's uh, update the position once per frame, we're going to throw the actual game time in here, the real time, so that we don't get those glitches. So uh, that's the problem we're going to fight in the next video.